We often don't think of how important clothing is when it comes to the way we feel, the way we interact in the world, and the way that we want to have our future look. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five steps that I took during my move from Los Angeles to New York. I had to get rid of most of my clothes because we were expecting to be in a really tiny apartment. So I wanna talk about this small piece of the larger intentional living pie. But first, what is intentional living? You hear about it from the experts, all the woo-woo people, but don't really know how to apply it to your own life. Think of intentional living as a state of being. There are two ways you can live in the world. You can be reactive or you can be proactive. In a reactive state, you feel like you're barely surviving. You wake up, you consume the news, Instagram, emails, other things that are put upon you and you just consume, 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 but there's no active creation. You're not bringing something into the world from the inside out, you're just taking from the outside in. Your time is not really yours because you're allowing other things outside of yourself to dictate your time and your energy. When you are in an intentional state of being, you're thriving. You wake up with purpose and intention and you think about where time is spent and they're very purposeful about everything they do, but not in like a closed, resistant way. It's very expansive, expressive, warm, energetic way. What category are you in? And it's okay if it's not the one that you wanna be in right now. Someone who's thriving usually has a morning routine, which is something that changed my life. I absolutely love morning routines. The whole reason why I'm creating this video is because of the success of that. So if you wanna click above or below or in the description, I'll link you to my morning routine video and workbook. The way I think about it is when you're in survival mode and you wanna to get to thriving, intentional living is the bridge between the two. That is how you get from one state of being to another. For now we're gonna just focus on wardrobe because I find that's a really great way to express your state of being and to start living more intentionally. The first thing that I did was create a vision. I closed my eyes and imagined myself in the happiest state ever. And then I asked myself, what is she wearing? What is she doing? At first, the vision wasn't super clear. It wasn't absolutely detailed, but I remember seeing a certain outfit and it was bright and airy and light. And I felt this energetic, expansive, warm and blissful feeling. I went on Pinterest and I made some mood boards. I basically put together different outfits and visualized even further how I could see myself. I actually made a lot of boards on Pinterest to give you examples of different styles like minimal chic or holiday parties or different situations. So if you wanna follow the boards and check them out for your own vision creation, then check the link in the description below. The second step that I took was to take action. As you know, having a vision without action is useless and doing action without vision is still useless. You gotta have both of them together to really elevate and get to that next step in your life. After I created that vision, went on Pinterest and got into that blissful, warm state and really felt the emotion that I wanted to feel, I went into my closet and immediately anything that did not fit that state of being I wanted to be in, I just threw on the floor. Put it in a pile, old dresses from Forever 21, things that I wore when I was 19 that no longer made me feel womanly anymore. Another way you can do this though is if you know the things that you absolutely love in your closet that already make you feel that way, then put those in a pile and whatever is left over in your closet, those are the things that you get rid of. So it can go either way just depending on how you like to process things. So after that, that second step of doing the first clean through, it's time to go for the gut. Go through your closet and your dresser and any other places where you have clothes and ask yourself honestly, does this elevate my life? Will this get me to that next level that I'm hoping to accomplish? You are the creator of your future and this is the best way to start that. Go through and ask if each item will help you feel your happiest self and try as best as you can to not think of memories associated with it. I did that so many times and I ended up keeping everything. Remember that anytime a memory comes up, that is you holding on to your past self. And it's not bad to look at the past and to see memories and find joy from them, but if you wanna move forward, you don't wanna keep something because it attaches you to the past. You wanna keep something because it's gonna propel you into the future. I know that you can do it. If I can do it, you totally can.
The fourth one is to envision your future. So you have the vision, you have the Pinterest boards, you know what you wanna feel, you went through once, got rid of the obvious items of clothing, and then you went through again and really asked yourself if it brings you joy. Now it's time to be completely ruthless. Think about the clothing that you do want to wear, and then anything that doesn't match with that style, get rid of and plan to buy it later. I knew that I wanted a cute white t-shirt that was simple that I could just tuck into my jeans and then wear with blazers but I didn't really have nice white t-shirts. They were all junky and old, so I just got rid of them. And even though I didn't have white t-shirts for maybe a month or so, the whole time I was looking online and seeing what really connected with my soul and spirit. And I recently found the perfect white t-shirt that I absolutely love, and it was well worth the wait. We'll go through and see anything that maybe matches what you want to feel but that you want to elevate and remember that having quality items and buying less is better than buying a lot of things but they're cheap quality this brings us to the fifth and final step to shop smart on this fifth step to shop smart the goal is to have as little as possible in your closet and then build it up slowly with things that you love and that will elevate you i went to a maj sample sale in new york city it's a brand that I loved when I was in Zurich, but it was always too expensive. When I heard there was a sample sale, you better believe I was there. It was amazing. And now I just feel nothing but joy seeing it in my closet. The whole point is eliminating what's cheap, what doesn't fit into your vision. And then when you do buy things, making sure that they're quality and sophisticated. That's another thing I love about intentional living is you get rid of space emotionally and physically so that you can bring in the things that bring you joy. Moving forward, when you shop, it's not with this like need to have more, but it's a need to have intention in your life. So think of this as curating your own life. Every time you are shopping, do it with intention and awareness. Ask yourself, will this get me a step closer to being that person I want to be? And then with those answers, feeling your intuition, you can make the decision. And the cool thing is you can mix high and low. It's okay to have certain staples not be a certain brand because I know at the end of the day, would you rather spend $50 on a black t-shirt or on a dress? It's just the feeling. As long as you feel good in that t-shirt, no matter how much it costs, that is the goal. Please remember to buy with intention, intention, intention. Think of your future and how it fits into your life and don't be afraid to have that ownership. It's question time. Really, I got a question from Whitney on my Bloom in the City Instagram account and she asks, how do you stay intentional with your wardrobe when you work from home? I work from home as well. That's so great that you work from home and what a great question. Let me tell you that the first time I started working from home, I would stay in clothes that were kind of frumpy and didn't really have a purpose. And those were the days that I felt less motivated and intentional with my work and my purpose. Now, whenever I get up, I get dressed as if I'm going to work. And I have seen such a difference in my productivity, my excitement, my passion, my energy. I would say treat working from home like a normal job. It's going to reflect in everything that you do. And let me clarify, when you have an intentional wardrobe, that doesn't mean everything in it has to be club wear or fancy work outfits or gowns or all of these different things. An intentional wardrobe can just be anything that makes you feel elevated. When I worked in the music industry in Los Angeles, I met so many producers and artists, singers, songwriters, and I noticed that the most successful producers that I would meet, they would wear the same outfit every day. There was this one major producer who would just wear a black t-shirt and jeans. So even if you are working from home and you just don't wanna bother with choosing all these intricate outfits, as long as you have things in your closet that you love and make you feel good, no matter what you pick, it's gonna work because you're gonna feel great in it. The simplest outfit, that's the, less, the least amount of effort, but that makes me feel the most amount of amazing. If you work from home, pick an outfit with the least amount of effort, but that makes you feel amazing. I hope that helped. Thank you for watching this video on how to be intentional with your wardrobe. If you really liked it, there are other videos that I'm gonna post in this screen or in the links below in the description. So check them out and please subscribe. I'll see you later. And the butt print on the bed has helped me find where I need to sit each time. <laughs> Am I too close for your comfort? <laughs> Let's see.